Hey guys, my JK here with another Dungeon Hunter Champions video. This time I wanted to talk about gear and leveling and stats and so forth. Something that's very important in this game. And I don't know if it's been covered all that much because I feel like uh, a lot of the players in this game are former Summoner's War players. And they probably already understand this stuff. But for me, it's, it was kind of a learning experience. I had to pick it up as I went. And it was a little bit confusing. So hopefully if there's anybody else out there like me, uh, this will clarify um, a lot of the stuff about gear. Because I do think it's very, very important as far as your character progression. Um, and if you don't understand these mechanics, you're really going to be limited um, in how strong your characters can get, unless you're just like massively lucky. So, uh, actually, before I get into that, I wanted to talk about Rhoda real quick because she's one of my favorite characters, and I do see some people kind of misunderstanding her or saying she's overrated even. And it's because, like, at four star, five star, when people start using her in like Elder Drake, uh, she does seem to be more of a support type of character. So she'll like you know reduce cooldowns or lower attack um, or buff attack speed and stuff like that. But I have to say, at six stars, when you gear her up right, she maxes her out and everything. She's a nuke. Like she is a super damage dealer. And I don't think people understand her potential, or most people don't understand who haven't reached uh, six stars yet. And I have to say, like, even if I'm doing a farming level or a boss or anything like that, uh, arena even, her damage output is insane. It's actually on par with like a blade master, and my blade masters are pretty decked out. So I just wanted to kind of clarify that because people are not really understanding her true potential. She is one of the most powerful nat threes for sure. And as far as like damage dealing goes, she is definitely the best Nat 3 out there. So just wanted to put that out there because I don't want her to be, be misunderstood anymore. So anyway, on to the gear, which is the original topic of this video. Uh, so first of all, in this game, there's six different types of armors or gear that you can put on. There is a uh, pendant here, uh, bracer, helm, armor, shoulder, and glove. Um, the first thing to note is that with a pendant on the upper left here, the main stat that you see is defense here. Uh, that is always going to be a flat stat for defense. There's no changing that. Uh, so, you know, you can't get lucky and get like an attack pendant or something like that. For the main stat, at least, that's always going to be the same. The thing that varies, of course, is going to be the substats under that. So keep that in mind. Some of these do have set stats that you can't really change. Uh, this being one of them. The bracer down here on the bottom left, this can be pretty much anything. This can be a flat stat, this can be a percentage stat, it can be attack, it can be defense, HP, you name it. And um, so in that case, you definitely want to make sure that you're getting the stat that affects your character the best and it has a percentage. You don't want a flat stat if you can help it at all. Uh, obviously, early on in the game, you'll have to take what you can get. But in the long run, you want to really look out for those like, um, you know, the ones that are directly improve your character the most. So uh, uh, Bracer is, has a ton of flexibility, ton of um, potential there. With the helmets, these are always flat stat attack stats. So again, you know, the only thing you can really change is substats. Armor is the same way. This is always going to be max HP. Uh, the shoulder is just like the bracer. It can be anything. So you want to find the most beneficial stats and you want to find a percentage based one, not a flat stat. And finally, same thing with the glove. It can be anything. Look for the percentages. So um, that's pretty much a rundown of the different types of gear. Uh, of course, you have the sets in this game that give you the um, bonuses. So for this one, this is an adept set gear. If you equip four, if you look down here, this is a equip four bonus. If you equip four of these on any uh, part of your body, you get a skill cooldown time of minus 30, which is very important in this game, very powerful. Um, if you look at another type of set on her, this character, you have a keen set. This is an equip two bonus, which means that uh, if you put two of these anywhere in your body, you get the bonus of a crit rate plus 15%. So, you know, you'll either put on a four set and a two set, or you'll put on like three two sets pretty much. Uh, of course, you can go with broken sets as well. They don't have to match, but you're missing out on some of those bonuses there. So the next topic, I guess, when it comes to gear is kind of the age-old question of what's more important, like a white, green, blue, purple, orange. Uh, is that important or is it the number of stars that's most important? And the simple answer to that is that um, 
in most cases, unless you just get killer, killer substats, in most cases, the most important thing is the number of stars. And let me tell you why. Because, um, first of all, the stars basically um, determine the magnitude of your stats. So let's say, let's look over here. I think this is a good example. No, that's not a good example. Okay, here. Here you have a six star um, Vampiric Bracer attack plus 47%. This is a t level 12. If you go over here to another level 12, this is a four star Bracer. You see that it's only 32% attack. So the magnitude of that stat can dramatically diff uh, increase if you go up in stars so you know because this is the stat that you can control the most and the substats are kind of random up to rng um this is what's going to be most important to have um you know higher magnitude of so obviously you'd want 47 percent instead of the 32 percent so that's why number of stars is so important um, of course, if you get like the perfect substats underneath, that can make up for lack of rarity or whatever. But uh, in most cases, you want to have that higher star count, which is why people say that um, even like white gear can be valuable. Like, for instance, this one, uh, this might not be the best example um, because, again, it's like a pendant. It's always a defense stat and everything. But, um, you know, because that magnitude is so important, you want to have more stars. So, um as far as substats go, every single piece of gear that you find, whether it's a white one, whether it starts out as orange, any single piece of gear can end up having four substats underneath. It just depends on what level you get it to. So the orange ones that you find will come with all four substats already included, which is good. Um, and I'll explain a little bit why. Um, whereas the white ones come with no, no substats and you have to get them as you level them. So every single piece of gear is going to have one substat at level 3, two substats at level 6, three substats at level 9, and four substats at level 12. Um, I'm saying at least those. So even a white piece of gear, if you get it up to level 12, will turn orange with those four substats. Now, the question becomes, well, what's the benefit of having an orange one uh, to start with at level 0 versus a white one at level 0? The first benefit is that you get to see what the four substats are. It's not left to mystery. So, you know, you can already tell right away if you get an orange one, wow, these substats are terrible. And you can already decide there not to level it at all. Or you can sell it or whatever. Whereas with the white one, you kind of have to keep leveling it and unlocking those substats to determine whether or not it's a keeper or not. So that's one benefit. The second benefit is that... Um, because the white ones, or even green ones, or whatever, the lower rarity, or whatever they're called, uh, because they don't come with all the substats, basically every time you're unlocking them, uh, the unlocking of those substats prevents you from actually rolling more stats into one of the existing substats. So, for instance, if you start out with this white sturdy pendant here, at level 3, You'll get that first substat. Let's just keep it really simple for the purposes of illustration and say that every substat that comes in or gets leveled or whatever is 5%, right? Just to keep it simple. So at level 3, you get a substat, 5% for attack. At level 6, you get another substat, 5% for defense. At level 9, you get another substat, 5% for max HP. Then at level 12, you get another substat, 5% for uh, attack speed, okay? So at level 12, for this um, piece of gear that started out as a white sturdy pendant, you're going to have a sturdy pendant that's orange now, but it's going to have 5% to all those four substats that I mentioned. Whereas, if you had started out with a 5-star sturdy pendant that was orange, and you had all those four substats already unlocked, they already start off at 5%. So if you level it to level 3, one of those substats is going to get an additional 5%. If you level it to level 6, you're going to get another additional 5% somewhere. It's going to be randomly distributed. So by the time you get to level 12, you know, you could have a potential of like 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, a total of 40% versus having 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, a total of 20%. So that's the other main benefit of having a higher like color or orange like to begin with versus a white. 
because those substats can potentially get a lot bigger than you would otherwise get. But again, in the end, the most important thing, especially for these um, bracers, shoulders, and gloves, the most important thing still is the rarity level or the number of stars because you want that higher magnitude in the main stat because you can't really control the substats too much. So, wow, okay, that was a lot to talk about. I hope I didn't really lose you. Um, and I hope I was making sense. And I know you can rewatch this video if you need to, but I just wanted to get that all out there because, again, I don't think it's very commonly explained uh, from what I've seen. Maybe it's on some website somewhere, but this is just from what I've learned playing this game and trying to figure out what the best gear is and everything like that. So hopefully that was helpful to some of you guys. Sorry it feels boring. Sorry it feels super technical or whatever. But uh, it's very important to know um, to build the character correctly and so forth. So anyway, that's all I wanted to say for gear. I'm glad I got this video out of the way and then I can do more interesting content in the future. I do want to show my Elder Drake 10 team, my uh, Steel Widow 10 team, because I am farming those almost with 100% success, and I want to show you my teams, although it's not super um, unique either, so I don't think it's like as urgent, but hopefully that was helpful to some of you guys, and um, yeah, I'll see you guys next time, and uh, let me know if that was helpful, because I, I feel like I was babbling and being overly technical, hopefully I wasn't, so uh, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time, peace.